I believe in America. America has made my fortune, and I raised my daughter in the American fashion. I gave her freedom, but I thought... In this iconic opening star. from the 1971 film adaptation of Mario Puzo's The Godfather, Don Vito Corleone's meeting with the symbolically named Undertaker Amerigo Bonacera resets the ways in which gangsters and organized crime would from then on be portrayed in popular culture. The scene is taken nearly verbatim from the novel, but is moved up by Puzo and director Francis Ford Coppola to open the story, set the tone, and lay bare the power dynamic between Don Corleone and his subjects. Then I said to my wife, for justice, we must go to Don Corleone. Why didn't you go to the police? Why didn't you come to me first? What do you want of me? Tell me anything, but do what I beg you to do. What is that? I'll give you anything you ask. We've known each other many years, but this is the first time you ever came to me for counsel or for help. I can't remember the last time that you invited me to your house for a cup of coffee. Even though my wife is godmother to your only child. But let's be frank, you, you never wanted my friendship. Before The Godfather, gangsters were largely portrayed in the movies as psychopaths and outliers. Puzo's novel reset that image to portray mafia dons as the heads of extended family households, wise and loving, though no less brutal. Buona sera. Buona sera. What have I ever done to make you treat me so disrespectfully? If you'd come to me in friendship, then the scum that ruined your daughter would be suffering this very day. And if by chance an honest man like yourself should make enemies, then he would become my enemies. And then they would fear you. Be my friend. Godfather. Good. Someday, and that day may never come, I'll call upon you to do a service for me. But uh, until that day, accept this justice as a gift on my daughter's wedding day. Gracias. Gracias. From the first Godfather film on, Mario Puzo became a keeper of what he called the myth, what the Corleone family and those in its orbit would and would not do. In these notes on Coppola's half of the screenplay, he schools the filmmaker on a point of authenticity. It's a small point, but it goes a long way toward establishing character and mood and reinforcing Puzo's idea of a crime family. Come over here, kid, learn something. You never know, you might have to cook for 20 guys someday. You see, you start out with a little bit of oil. And you fry some garlic. Then you throw in some tomatoes, some tomato paste. You fry it. You make sure it doesn't stick. Mm -hmm. You got it to a boil. You shove in all your sausage and your meatballs. Huh? And a little bit of wine. And 
a little bit of sugar, and that's my trick. Why don't you cut the crap? I got more important things for you to do. Puzo sent his daughter to collect his first Oscar for Best Adapted Screenplay in 1973. He was around in 1975 to collect his second, but Coppola went missing. The Godfather, Part 2. Screenplay by Francis Ford Coppola and Mario Puzo. Lenny, screenplay by Julian Barry. Murder on the Orient Express, screenplay by Paul Dean. The Young Frankenstein, screenplay by Gene Wilder and Mel Brooks. And the honored writer is Francis Ford Coppola and Mario Puzo. Where's Francis? <laughs> thank you very much. And I'd like to thank all the actors and actresses in The Godfather, both pictures, all three Godfathers, for bringing the book alive, as I imagine it might be on the screen. Thank you very much. As a screenwriter, Puzo had a genius for small suggestions that had a big impact. At this script meeting for The Godfather Part Three, he successfully proposes the steps of the Palermo Opera House as a dramatic setting for the climax of The Godfather Part Three. You don't have to do this to me, please. What do you mean?
At a script meeting for the 1978 film version of Superman, Puzo comes up with the solution to a thorny point with regard to the S on Superman's chest. Uh, I, 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 here's the answer right now for the tape. That symbol will be the symbol of a member of the Council of Elders on Krypton. Right? That, that S symbol. It should be jor symbol. Right? It's, well, since he's a member of the right. Council of End Elders, he has that symbol in his house, and therefore that would be a direct descendant of right. How's that? Is that yeah. Okay. Any attempt by you to create a climate of fear and panic among the populace must be deemed by us an act of insurrection. You would accuse me of insurrection? Has it now become a crime, a cherished life? Will you abide by the council's decision? I will remain silent. Neither I nor my wife will leave Krypton. Puzo's solution actually became a part of the ongoing Superman myth subsequent to the movie. Puzo's talent for characterization and narrative drive made him an excellent screenwriter. His screenplay for the 1974 disaster film Earthquake was a typically sprawling Puzo story, with multiple characters and subplots, as well as lots of sex and violence, all of which made it difficult and expensive to film. The film's producer brought in a second writer and altered the script slightly, then attempted to rob Puzo of screenplay credit, and, arguably more important to Puzo, the money that accompanied it. A protracted fight involving the Writers Guild followed, and required Puzo to pull together painstaking documentation for his right to screenplay credit. As noted in Puzo's documentation, this scene from the finished film differs only slightly from the one depicted in his original screenplay. Puzo often lamented the undervalued role of the screenwriter in Hollywood, and indeed, filmmakers ignored Puzo's work at their peril. Francis Ford Coppola's movie, The Cotton Club, gives Puzo story credit, yet abandons the writer's more cohesive original script. I got a head for figures. Uh, well, what's your name? Would you believe Myrtle? Myrtle? Your name Myrtle? Yeah, right. Oh, Myrtle. Forget it. I got a Myrtle here. Vera, as in very, very. Cicero, like in Latin. Did you ever study Latin? I was an altar boy. Myrtle, huh? <laughs> yeah. Is that your birth name? <laughs> I was an altar boy. I was. I believe hey, it. you're wearing a girl? Oh, yeah. Oh, that's a lovely girl. Uh-huh. 
little men in blue. So behaving, Mr. Mr. Wanted by the police, Mr. Cerrone. <laughs> The final film was a confusing patchwork of elements and subplots that was not well received. Abandoning Puzo's screenplay may not have been the sole reason for the film's many faults, but it certainly didn't help. Why is it that your gift is to make people believe that you really know what you're talking about? That's what a writer does. That's what a novelist does. I think of myself more as a, in terms of being a novelist than a writer. It's a special craft. Storytelling or? Yeah, storytelling. And it includes everything. You know, it's like, it's like a whole separate world. You build a world and, you know, you live in it for a while.